Well, it sounds like Radeon might finally be producing high-end GPUs once again. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously, and not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below other listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9-12% to depending on when you join. So if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that'll likely be popping up very soon. Okay, so this information actually comes from a WCCF Tech article, and they actually got their information from the well-known leaker Kepler L2, who did go ahead and post on a forum a number of different images of what could possibly be the next generation of AMD GPUs, including what appears to be a flagship GPU that actually looks really, really fast. Now, to be clear, and I want to tackle this one right up front because I don't think this has been covered real well. This is not official information, first of all, obviously. However, I also want to let you guys know that while Kepler L2 has definitely gotten a ton of stuff right in the past, it would appear do keep in mind you should definitely take this with a grain of salt because nowhere in his post did he say this is definitely what's going to happen. So this could very well be just speculation. Well, it does likely have some amount of credence behind that, but I just want to make sure that you guys know this is not official and it definitely could change. But with that out of the way, let's take a look at what he posted. So we do have a number of different images and the first one is a very, very large GPU with what appears to be 16 unified memory controllers around that GPU. Now that's important because that would actually signify that you would be looking at a 512-bit bus, the same memory bus width that we see on the RTX 5090, also signaling that this would be an insanely powerful GPU. However, I just want to say right away, there is no way you're going to be seeing, well, I shouldn't say no way, but I, I find it very, very doubtful that you would be seeing a GPU from AMD Next Generation with a 512-bit memory bus. Why do I say that, well, it's simply not necessary. It would be a massive increase in expense and possibly a larger GPU die that it simply doesn't need to be. A 384-bit bus is more than enough memory bandwidth for a GPU of this size. I say that because, according to the schematics here that are being shown, this is a 96 compute unit GPU. Now, 96 compute units is a big jump over the 9070 XT, which is technically AMD's current modern fastest GPU, a 50% increase in core is a lot, but going from 256 to 512 bit bus plus GDDR7 would be way more than a 50% increase in memory bandwidth. And unless this GPU is massively inefficient with memory bandwidth, there's no reason for this to exist. So this is why I was telling you guys up front, be aware, this is definitely speculation. And it's very clear to me that it would appear as though he probably doesn't know for sure what the actual memory controller is gonna look like on the final GPU. Now, that being said, the core count is probably correct or at least close to correct. 96 compute units is a very good number and a very large increase over the 9070 XT and would afford them a huge performance uplift that could put them right next to an RTX 5090 or an RTX even 6090 depending on the instructions per clock as well as the clock speeds. Now he does also have a number of other GPUs that are here including one with 40 compute units, 24 and 12 compute units. However, once again, since I do believe this is speculation, I'm going to go ahead and jump into based on this information as well as other stuff that I have seen what I believe you are going to be seeing with the RX 10,000 series and yes I do believe it will be called that to further mimic the naming scheme of Nvidia so let's jump into that so let's start off with the lowest end GPU I'm going to be talking about today and that's going to be the RX 1070 now he does state that apparently there's going to be a 40 compute unit GPU die out there could that be the case certainly it could however I do believe a 56 
56 compute unit version will exist. As the 40 compute unit version appeared to have only a 192 bit bus when I counted the memory controllers. So clearly you're gonna want a 256 bit bus to sit somewhere between the 384 and the 192. That's where I believe the 1070 will come into play as they wouldn't wanna reduce the amount of memory or go to 18 gigabytes or do anything weird like that. So yes, I do believe there will be once again, 16 gigabyte mid-range cards with a 256 bit bus. With that being the case, well, this thing with 56 compute units should come in somewhere around the performance of a 9070 XT, except for the memory bandwidth would actually go from 640 gigabytes per second to 896 gigabytes per second. And the TDP would likely be somewhat similar, but probably a bit lower as it should be on a more efficient type of node. However, that being said, that node probably will be pushed pretty hard once again. I believe the clock speeds will likely be going from around three gigahertz on the 9070 XT to around 3.3 on the 1070. Now, I do believe it can be pushed even further, and that's where the 1070 XT will come into play. I believe once again, you will see a 64 compute unit version of a mid-range GPU. It'll have a similar memory configuration, but I believe the clock speeds will go up to 3.45 gigahertz as around a 15% increase in clock speed should be no problem out of a more advanced node. Now, with that being the case, this one should definitely be faster than the 9070 XT, and we'll get to how much faster in just a second. But now let's take a look at the 1080. Yes, the RX 1080, and honestly, I really like that naming scheme. This thing should have around 84 compute units, which is a pretty substantial jump. Once again, a decent jump in clock speeds. However, now we're moving from a 256-bit bus to 320-bit at 28 gigabits per second with GDDR7. You're looking at a memory bandwidth of 1,120 gigabytes per second, and well, this is gonna be a very fast GPU with a lot of memory bandwidth. Now, the TDP will rise probably pretty substantially, but again, you're getting a lot more performance. Then we finally have the 1080 XT. Now, I did think there was gonna be a 1090 XT that was gonna be even faster than this, but fellas, AMD's gotta get those costs down. So I think we're stopping at the 1080 XT, and this would likely have the 96 compute units that was mentioned by Kepler L2 and running at a high boost clock of 3.45 gigahertz and with a 384 bit bus. Well, now this one's gonna have 24 gigabytes instead of the 20 gigabytes on the 1080, which is plenty. That's more than enough for gaming and it allows them to get their cost down. That's why I'm saying no way to the 512 bit bus. I just can't see them doing that. That would massively increase the cost because you'd have more video memory. There'd be more competition to use it as AI type stuff instead of gaming. It, it, it just doesn't make any sense to put a 512 bit bus on a card like this if they're trying to keep costs down, which of course they definitely will be. So with that being the case, you're gonna be looking at 1,344 gigabytes per second. That is over double the memory bandwidth of the RX 9070 XT, which once again means no, they do not need to go to a 512-bit bus. Now, this will likely come with a TDP of around 450 watts, so it should be lower than the RTX 5090. However, in terms of performance, it should actually be doing very, very well. So let's take a look at that. Let's break down the price, performance, and possible release date for these GPUs, and let's start off once again with the 1070. This thing I do believe will be 499, and in terms of performance should basically get you identical to the RX 9070 XT. So you'll basically be able to pick up a 9070 XT for a hundred bucks cheaper. whoop de doo Yeah, yeah, that's great, but <laughs> yeah, that's great, but you probably want more performance than the 9070 XT. So let's move on to the next one, the 1070 XT. This one should come in, I think, at the same price as the 9070 XT of $599. However, you should be getting a real world performance upgrade of around 25%. And with a release date of, it, look, it could be next year. It could be next year. But I do believe since AMD tends to be, at least Radeon, a little bit behind NVIDIA in terms of release dates, I wouldn't be surprised to see quarter one of 2020. 27, so just a little bit over a year away for this GPU to be released. Also with the RX 1080, this one I think will jump from around 600 bucks to 749. Now this should be going head to head with something like an RTX 6070 Ti. However, this could be actually even more powerful as this should be around 50% faster than something like the RX 9070 XT. And even more impressively, well that would actually put it not too far behind the RTX 5090. And once again, release date, I believe quarter one of 2027. And then let's finally sum it up with the rumored, again, 96 compute unit version, if that turns out to be true from Kepler L2, which should have 
around a price tag of $999. That would put it at half the price of the RTX 5090, and get this, it should actually give you around the same performance. Now, there is a possibility that it could be even faster. Again, everything is up in the air still right now, but to be fair, it could be a little bit slower as well. So I do think it is probably pretty fair to assume you'll be getting performance around the RTX 5090. So we'll be dethroning the RTX 6090? No, but it will also be around half the price of the 5090 or future potential RTX 6090. So if you want something that's almost as fast as the absolute fastest card you will to get at that time and as fast as the fastest card we have now, and do keep in mind, a lot of rumors are suggesting it's gonna have massively improved AI as well as, you know, all the upscaling and ray tracing performance you would expect out of a refined architecture from AMD, well, yeah, this could be a really, really good GPU for $999. And I do think AMD realizes realistically that's probably the most that they can charge if they wanna try and take some market share from Nvidia, which I do believe will be the case next generation. But again, this will be really fast. I mean, 80% faster than the 9070 XT, right there with the RTX 5090. And basically you're getting an RTX 5090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, but for half the price. So if you are someone who's maybe on the fence of buying an RTX 5090 and you're thinking $2,000 is way too high, well, it might be worth waiting to see what both AMD as well as Nvidia has to show by the end of next year or maybe early in 2027. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RX 1080 XT really can come right next to the RTX 5090 or maybe even dethrone it for half the price? Or do you think they're going to fall short of expectations once again? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.